guys, it's Barky here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to start a basic, basic colony in RimWorld, maybe just the first week or so. So to start things off, we go to Create World, we have our seeds set up and everything. Seeds don't matter too much in the beginning for starter players, so we just want to leave things as they are, and we click Generate. As you can see, we've created the world Mahasim 5, and it's got very cold places all the way to, you know, quite temperate. So we just click Save and Finish, and then we say New Colony. New Colony gives you three storytellers, and the storytellers are basically how the game unfolds as well as the difficulty. So to start it off, we've got Cassandra Classic, and Cassandra Classic gives you events like raids, etc., etc., at a reasonable pace, and every time it gets a bit tougher than the last one. Next up, we have Phoebe Chillax, and Phoebe Chillax gives you a lot more time in between your raids, but it, I think it scales a bit faster than Cassandra Classic. Maybe not though, I can't remember. But yeah, and then Randy Random is just a gigantic asset. So we want to go to Cassandra Classic and click on Free Play if you're a starter. Baseball is not so bad, but I just want to show you guys the beginning. So then we go to Mahasim 5, which is the planet we just created, or the world. And then we choose a place. The starting biome that you choose is very important because this is where your game is going to take place. And you want to choose a place that is decent but not too difficult. So what you have over here is elevation, average temperature for you know the different months, and then the terrain type, rainfall, etc, etc. Now these are really important stats because the average temperature in January, which is winter, will be very cold. Well, I mean 9 is nothing. Let's go to the top here. That's negative 52, for example. But yeah, so we're going to go over here because this is definitely the easier part of the world. And let's go over here. Wait, that one's pretty good. This one here. So now we have a average temperature of 10 degrees in January, which is definitely doable. And an average temperature of 26 degrees in July. And a temperate forest, which is the biome. The terrain is flat, not many rocks. Rainfall is decent, stone type marble, so there'll be quite a lot of marble walls. And in the growing period, the most important thing I think is year round, which means your crops can grow all the time, which is just awesome. So then we go into advanced and we take a look. You can choose your map size over here, starting with you know 200 by 200, which is quite small, and then double that, well, not polymized, but whatever, <laughs> double that 400 by 400. At the bottom, which is actually like four times as big as it. So let me say select site and go in. Clicking select site, it takes you into your character sheets. And character sheets are a very important part of the game. In fact, one of the most important for beginners. Now, although this is all very important, I'm not going to go into the starting site right now. I'm just going to randomize, randomize, randomize. And let's go. As you can see, our colonists landed on this planet. I think they crash landed. And this is the environment that you've been given. You kind of chose, but a lot of it also randomizes. So, yeah. So we get three notifications instantly saying need colonist bed, hunter lacks weapon, and build a room. And most of your notifications will come here, or you know, you'll see them happening right in front of you. So one of the first things you do is you go to work and you select manual priorities so that you can give people numbers and they'll do that and they'll do their work in an order. So Eva, wait, let's actually just take a look like this. So we click on Eva and then we click on character, which is next to gear. And we see that she's really good with animals. She's, she can learn social skills very fast and her growing skills are really good. So that's perfect. You want to grow her. Let's go to Squirrel, Rothaga, and he can be our hunter. And then Lexi, she can be our cooking and construction. Perfect. So what we'll do is we'll go to squirrel, and squirrel will be number one hunting because food is really important. Construction number two is pretty good at constructing. Let's make repairing two. And this stuff doesn't really matter early game. Research will definitely matter at harder difficulties, but you don't really need to think about that right now. And then what was she? She was our grower. Eva was our grower, so we go to her, Eva over here, and then we say growing number one. Is she good at anything else? Hmm. Whatever. She can just be our grow for now. And then Lexi can just kind of be our hauler. And then plant cut. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is you want to 
click on all of these items that you spawn with and click F so that they become unforbidden. Unforbidden means that your characters can interact with them. And obviously that's kind of needed. So you'll start out with a gun, a survival rifle, a pistol and usually a plasteel knife I guess. And you want to give the pistol to your hunter, the survival rifle to the next best shot. And then Lexi can take the knife. That isn't too important right now because you will get raided and the raiders will usually have guns. And in the beginning they're pretty simple to kill so you should be fine. Next thing what I like to do is I like to get my growing done as fast as possible. So I want to set growing zone, put that down over there, let's say 6x6, six six. put another one next to it saying 6x6 six six. and then I put a 5x2 over there, 6x2 sorry. Now the 6x2 I say for Zerigium, Zerigium, Zerigium something, and Zerigium is herbal medicine. So if you see over here we've got 6 medicine, 6 medicine, and 6 medicine. And that's good, but it doesn't last too long, so we kind of need to get medicine as soon as possible. Then in this one, you want to set it to strawberry plant. Strawberry plant grows decently fast and it has good nutrition values. I will go into depth in this in another video. And then this one you can set to rice. Rice goes incredibly fast. Um, and you'll need food quite fast. So the next thing you want to do is you want to set up a little tiny structure with the amount of steel you have. So 7 by 5 is good. And then you put an auto door there. Auto doors are good. They just save a bit of time when your people need to go inside. Then you say furniture and then you go sleeping spot because your colonists need a place to sleep. You can put it like that, and then you see that disappears there, one of the notifications you have. What I did forget about was mining. We need someone to mine for us. So I set the priority to 2, because he's already got number 1 priority here. And Doctor's a situational thing, so no biggie. She can have 4 mining, she's not too good at it, and mining for her can be 2 as well. Plant. Wait, let's make it 3. Okay. So then we want to set order to mine a bit of steel over here. Just like that. How do I know this is steel? Because I can click on it and it says compacted steel. And you just kind of look. After playing for a while you'll just see steel. You know, there we go. I didn't actually survey the surroundings properly. Ooh, there's some gold. That's pretty good. More steel, steel, steel. And then the rest is just limestone. Maybe some marble. This is granite. Is there any marble? No. <laughs> Oh, right, here's plasteel. That stuff is incredibly valuable later on. Okay, and then you kind of want to press 3, because you get the times over here, and 3 is the fastest. Oh, there's a fourth one, I think. I've got developer mode activated, so I can kind of just mess around a bit. But this should be fine for now. Alright, let's undraft her. I drafted her by accident. She'll go grow. Oh, I guess she should have. Wait, what? Eva? Oh, okay, never mind, my bad. Okay, so she's doing that. Now another thing we want to do is we want to get a power source. So I've got mods installed just for generators and this, but steel, steel micro solar generator won't exist. I mean solar generator, yeah. But a normal steel size one will. So we just put that down right there. We get our conduit, put it like that, and like that. And then we put one battery over here. A lot of people disagree with me doing this, but I think it's quite important. Um, and the chances of it exploding early game are quite slim, because batteries do explode. So you must remember that. First night, and as soon as people will go to sleep. Basically when you spawn into the game, you should look around the map and check out for these kind of space meals. Or they used to be called survival meals, or maybe a mod changed that. And those things help a lot. You can probably go a few days without getting any other external food to help you out, but we will hunt and hunting is important. So you see as soon as people go to sleep after they've eaten the meal and here they go, they sleep in their little spots and everyone's happy. I wonder why this is not connected. Okay anyways, I'm probably just being a noob. Wait, let me take a look at that again quickly. 
Okay. Anyways. So what we want to do next now that we've got everything set up is set a stockpile zone over here. Decently big one. Say like that. And then a dumping zone. Now dumping zones there's a few ways to put them, but I usually put them in a long straight line around the base. I think that's generally the best, and I'll explain why now. And that is because dumping zones make your enemies take longer to get across. So you see this limestone trunk. Enemies, if they're walking across, and also your colonists, take extra time to walk across them. So I like to put a dumping zone as a kind of barrier. Like the first wave kind of defense, you know? But eventually you'll be using these trunks, marble trunks and everything else to uh, get yourself some more stone walls. But for now it's okay. Not too big of a deal at the moment. So Squirrel's gonna go mine some compacted steel and I'll tell him to go hunt soon. And now I'll explain why I gave him the pistol. Basically the pistol is pretty inaccurate, but it's good for hunting because it means that your hunter has to go closer into the animals to shoot at them. And this is amazing because the AI in this game is retarded. No offense to people, but they are really dumb. So I'm using that to my advantage. Okay, so now that we've got the basics set up, we can afford to start expanding a bit, such as taking the steel walls like this and creating a bit of a bigger home area for ourselves and start creating rooms. Wanna do this and that. Now we have three rooms. We can create auto doors in all of them. Auto doors just save time when you walk in, so they're quite useful. And I, I don't use steel doors ever, pretty much. Auto doors is just a lot faster. It does take a bit more steel in the beginning, but in my opinion it's completely worth it. Then again, my opinion is usually wrong, so... Yeah, take it as you will. So we're going to put a lamp over here just for light. To get a mood buff. And that's pretty much a good start, I think. As you can see, they're taking stuff and putting it in the dumping zone. I mean, in the stockpile zone, sorry. Here's the dumping zone there. And they put up the zerigium, zerigium, and strawberry plants, and rice plants. And soon we'll be raking in food, like there's no tomorrow. So next we want to go to the this, this production tab, and we want to click on steel butcher table. And put that over there, and then we want to get a cook stove, and put that over there. And these are quite crucially important, because that's how we make food using meat, and whatever else we grow over here. So it's quite important, not the end of the world important, but relatively so. Okay, so we wake up on the third day and it asks us to name our colony, so I'll name it the room, since this is pretty much our basic base. It's just a room for now, which we'll expand in a bit. We've mined a few more things, we have a bit more resources, and now what our notification is telling us to do is to get a few security devices. And that is pretty important. I think. Um, but we're playing on baseball, that's not the most important thing, but I'll do it just so you know. Okay. Alright, so that's why it's important to get rooms going up, because now explosions will start to happen in the rain. I was hoping that he would do this first, but I didn't see the trees, maybe. Or I'm just blind. But that's, that's what happens when you have these kind of devices in the rain without a roof. And you do get roofed areas. Um, once the whole room is closed. So once he's made this wall, it should be fine. There we go, see? And this whole thing is now covered. And they'll repair this, and everything is fine. So next what you want to do is you want to go to the structures, and make something shaped like that. So I'll just take that off. For now. Mm. I guess we can do it like that. They can have a bit of cramped room, whatever. And then, like this. That's really unfair to some people, I guess. Oh well, who cares? And then we put a steel ordered over here. And suddenly we have nice, pretty terrible rooms, but better than this. So we take steel bed and we click on it to get the options, and we'll go wooden. Save resources. Put the wooden bed there. And there we go. So now they'll make this room for them. Very nice. It's quite a nice room. And that's good enough for now. So you can see we have run out of power. 
due to the fact that this one steel solar panel is not enough. But as you can see, we finished the steel butcher's table. We can add a build butcher creature and then say do forever. That's what I usually leave it as an add build. Forget about this stuff. This is all mods. Add simple meal. Cook until you have 15. This is the number I usually go for. So that gives you quite a while. Okay, so power will eventually return. Um, you can disconnect these to save power, but a few hours in the night is not the end of the world. So now we can afford to build another one right there. And that will supplement us even more. And what I usually end up doing is making another structure over here, which I'll do for you now. Like this, and this will be our battery farm. You want to keep batteries away from the main base, definitely. Um, because they are volatile, and they explode if you don't handle them properly. And that is never nice. So there we go. We have three rooms. All very nice, pretty cramped, but no one's complaining. And that'll be nice to sleep in for our colonists. So some time has passed and now suddenly we've got a notification saying that a wanderer has joined. A villager named Stella has arrived and is joining the colony. So we take a look at the Stella chick. She's pretty cool, carrying 848 silver. So she is a welcome addition. Because that is a ton of money at the moment. So we look at her... Oops, let's actually look at her character sheet quickly. So she's really good at construction, she's good at animals, she's a good cook. So she is exactly what we need. So right now construction falls down, let's put it down to her. And let's make squirrels construction 3. And we take an order to go hunt. There's order, hunt. And you find a nice group of animals, quite far away from the base if possible. Because, uh, as I said, the AI in this game is kind of shoddy. They'll, like, shoot at their friends just for fun, I feel. Let's just do that. You can just go kill a whole lot of random stuff there. And you will. So now... I forgot to remove these beds. So they haven't bothered to use them. Damn you, common sense. Right, I do not think this through in case someone else joined. We'll have to do that. Put that there. Mm. I'm unhappy with this, but you know, basic base, it's okay. Okay, cool. So, cargo pods just crashed. Oh, and it's meat. That's fantastic. And that's pretty much it, guys. As you can see, I've started to build cables on the outside of my base to put steel turrets everywhere. Um, once this is done, I've kind of used up all my steel, but. Once you get this, you're fine. The first raid will come in a day from now, pretty much. And you should be able to handle it relatively easy. Everyone, it's Baki here, and I'm back with another Rimworld tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make a fridge. Oh no, she has a disease, no kidding. Um, basically, a fridge is somewhere where you can lower the temperature down so that food does not deteriorate. And I'll show you exactly how to do that now. So what I've done is I've made a little room over here, and I've put a little stockpile zone over here I can show you which only allows foods in it and then animal corpses and I've set the priority to importance so that it goes over this and over that <sighs> okay and now basically what I'm waiting for is these people to come and freaking build stuff <sighs> always waiting and we should definitely build some more solar generators I found out that now yeah so we just got raided she took out a solar generator. Ah, oh, damn, Amy. But anyways, that's fine for now. Let's just set it to bolts along. Anyways, basically in this game, there are attributes given to all food. And that is fresh or rotten. And then refrigerated or not refrigerated. And when it spoils. So this spoils in three and a half days if I don't refrigerate this room. The temperature of this game is listed at the bottom right if you look over here. Outdoors 10 degrees Celsius. I'm pretty sure you can change it to Fahrenheit or Kelvin if you prefer. Now basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this room so that I can fill it up with coolers and then set the temperature down to below zero. Because zero is the freezing rate. So I'm just waiting for Stella to come and build this dumb Stella. 
Oh my gosh, she's seriously cloud watching right now. Sorry about this lazy woman, guys. Basically, in my last video, I showed you exactly how to make a very, very basic, basic base. And this is it, after a few minutes. Let's just get this done. Okay, so now we take the two coolers. Well, let's just take the one for now. And set it down to minus 10. So now you can see the target temperature is minus 10. And you can check at the bottom there, bottom right. It'll show that the indoor temperature is going down to negative 1 degrees. So now we're going to do this to that one. Set it down to minus 10. And now we can just watch our power leave us. As uh, things run out of energy. Put another 2 there, just for good measure. Okay, we made it to 12 o'clock at least. People don't like sleeping without energy. And now, as you can see, the power cuts. So as you can see at the bottom right there, the temperature is starting to increase. And that is horrible. Because now the food will spoil. Rice spoils in 400 days at this temperature. Okay, so it's manageable for now. Oh, Eva. Swan Collins has dementia. <sighs> but anyways... And that's pretty much all there is for the fridge. You just take a room, you lower the temperature so that food doesn't deteriorate, and suddenly you can prepare for those harsher winters where you can't grow food, or when a raid, you know, pretty much confines you, or when a pack of manhunters just ensure that you can't do anything about them, I guess. You can see Eva busy getting our first wave of uh, rice here. The strawberry's almost done. Another thing that rice grows a lot faster than strawberries, but the nutrition is a bit lower. So keep that in mind. Anyways guys, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And comment, please guys. I really want to hear what you guys have to say. Thanks for watching.